Yeah, what's going on, my friends? We're back at it again, coming off of a game three, heading into game four. This is the first game that we've gotten yet, uh, game four of the NBA Finals, where you don't have two days of rest in between. So that'll be very interesting. A lot to get into. I'm Dave Lockroom with Odd Shopper. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Tell me, how'd you do game three? What are you looking at for game four? We're going to cover all of that today and then tomorrow, obviously, for game four on Friday. Once we have more props, once we have more information, big piece of looming news that we'll get to all of that. We're going to really dig into the props, but I think it's important. It's it's of immense importance right now to look at what transpired in game three, how we apply that to game four. You guys can take this information, take these stats, take what we've learned and apply that yourself in game betting, whatever it is, or once news breaks, if it happens after one of my videos, you can apply everything that you know to that. So this is going to be an important video. It's going to set us up really nicely going into game four. So let's take a look. Uh, oh, and by the way, follow me at Lafayette underscore D on Twitter, L O U G H Y underscore D. We're doing live watch alongs for these games. Yesterday was a blast over at playback dot com slash room slash awesome it takes two seconds to sign up and all you have to do is authenticate your provider if you want to hang out with us i think you'll have a good time uh real time there's no delay on everything we're both we're all watching the exact same stream at the exact same time got a chat room and all that stuff zero delay so this is what i'm looking at game three was once again decided by double digit points so now you've got games decided by 12 19 and 16 points through the first three games of the nba finals and it's crazy too, because when you look at these, at one point or another, they've all been somewhat close. Uh, like, okay, yesterday, for example, and the Celtics still undefeated coming off a loss now, 7-0, 7-0 straight up, 7-0 against the spread, impressive shit. But Golden State had a legitimate shot to steal this game in Boston. Third quarter, now first half, they're down by a ton. At one point, 20 points, they closed the gap going into halftime. But at one point in the third quarter, Steph Curry scores seven points on one possession. You don't see that very often. Seven points on one possession. They cut the lead down the four at the end of the third, but with two and a half minutes left in the third quarter, they actually had a one point lead. So I look at this and say, they had every opportunity to win this game, but Boston pulled away and rallied every single time Golden State started making some inroads. Every time they started cutting into that deficit, you see Boston pull away, drain some threes, get easy buckets in the paint. They did everything well. And as crazy as this sounds, I think Kavon Looney only playing 16 minutes actually hurt Golden State. You know, you could argue, yeah, but uh, what about being able to defend the perimeter and, and three-point shooting? I get all of that. But they had just, they got absolutely tormented on the boards. They had six offensive rebounds. Usually Kavon Looney makes a huge impact there. But on the defensive glass, they struggled too. Boston had 15 offensive rebounds in that game. When you're dominating possessions like that and maintaining possession on, on the offensive side, you're absolutely going to dominate. And that's what we saw. Look, don't get me wrong. It's it, Boston was knocking down threes. They still play good defense. But the Warriors had a lot of open looks. Like They missed some dunks at the, at the basket, some layups at the rim. Robert Williams defensively was fantastic. But... Clay Thompson early on missed a lot of easy shots. I think Williams was a difference maker. Uh, and then you had Tatum, Brown, and Smart as the first trio in almost 40 years to have 20-plus points, 5-plus rebounds, and 5-plus assists in a finals game. So Boston did a lot right. Golden State turned the ball over a lot. But this is where it gets interesting. The Warriors, much like Boston, are also undefeated coming off of a loss. 5-0 and straight up, 4-1 and against the spread so if i'm hitting the warriors going into game four i'm doing it at bet mgm and i'll tell you why hear me out it's free 200 dollars. if you haven't taken advantage of free 200 dollars yet take advantage of a free 200 dollars. this is the way i see it all you have to do is sign up using the link in the pin comment or in the description use the pin comment super easy deposit ten dollars when you sign up that's all you have to do Take that 10 bucks, put it on either team to win for game four. I'll tell you who I like in just a second. And if that, you don't even have to win that. All that has to happen is either team scores 22 plus points. When they do, you get that $10 turned into $200 like that, right? When it settles. Here's how I see it. Even if you were to get that $200, let's say you put the $10 on a team and they lose. 
you still get the two hundred dollars out of that. Let's just go ahead and okay, you 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 lose all of that. You just go on a horrible run, right? You lose every bet. You still only and you lose the ten dollars. You still only lost ten dollars at the end of the day. But at one point, you had ten that turned into two hundred. On the other side, that ten could turn into a four figure bankroll, and now you're now you're rolling in it because you put ten dollars in. So use the link in the pin comment. Uh, simple way to get two hundred free dollars. Take advantage of it. I've got to say though. If there's, if there's one story that is huge, it is clearly Steph Curry. He went on a toured run in the third quarter. Absolutely stellar. Watching that guy is like nothing you've ever seen, right? But he's got an injury. Al Horford fell on his foot. And Al Horford's no small fella. Al Horford caught a flagrant too on that. Well, I thought that was kind of soft. I don't know how you're supposed to close out now with size 48 shoes. But besides the point, Steph Curry hurt his foot, and apparently it's similar to the one that he suffered back in March against Boston, uh, coincidentally, that kept him sidelined for, what was it, a month? He said, he said that, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I expect to play, and, and I probably won't miss any time. But I don't trust these players when it comes to player speak, especially immediately after the game where it happened, right? You still have adrenaline going. We saw that happen with Marcus Smart. He even came back into a game and then missed the next one. Happens all the time with swelling. I'm no medical professional, but I've watched enough basketball and football to see how these things go. So for those reasons, I can't say with confidence where I'm going in game four, but I definitely think if Curry plays and he isn't you know, hobbled and it looks like he's good to go, I'll take the four points with Golden State all day. Absolutely. If Curry plays, I'm going to take the four points with Golden State. I'll ride the same trend that they haven't lost coming off of a, a loss. I'll, I'll take the, the, the trend that Stephen Curry is amazing. And that even in game three, despite being down for most of it, they still had a lead at one point in the third quarter. All of these games are close until they're not. So there's nothing to say that the Warriors can't be the team to pull away in the, in the second half like they did in game two. Uh, but if Curry's out, I'll lay whatever the books give me on Boston. No joke. I mean, actually, that's somewhat tongue in cheek, right? Like, I'm not just going to, not laying 15 on Boston, but that, that would be an absolutely excellent spot to just throttle them and, and take firm control of this series if Stephen Curry sits. And it sucks because this is the first time that they've only had one day of rest. Every other game, you've had two days of rest, only one day of rest here. So Curry's got to come back and play in Boston at TD Garden on Friday. I have no idea how this is going to look. Another thing, and I've talked about this for a while now. Uh, you guys are with me. I know for sure because because you, you hit me up about it all the time. Third quarter Warriors bets. If the opportunity is there, take it. They're plus 14.3 in the third quarter this series. They've won the third quarter in these three games by 14, 21, and 8. And two of those games they lost. So, I mean, on all fronts, it's a great spot to get in at, especially if you go in to halftime trailing or in a close game as we've seen. And if you're looking for a quarter bet right now, uh, all first quarters, because this is actually posted, all of the first quarters have gone over the listed total right now, which is 54 and a half. They've gone for 61, 61, and 55. And here's the last thing before I let you guys go and catch you tomorrow. Given how many lopsided games we've seen, not just in the playoffs, but in this series too, I don't think it's crazy to sprinkle something on the alt lines, the alternative lines for whatever teams you're backing on Friday. Because the Warriors and Celtics are averaging margins of 13 points, almost 13 points in wins this postseason. So a few things to look at to keep in mind understanding what happened in game three, how we can apply it for game four, and what, you, what we should be looking for uh, heading into this pivotal game four in Boston before we send it back to Golden State. So appreciate you guys hanging out as always. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, get your free 200 bucks. Bet MGM, pin comment down below. Just deposit 10 bucks when you sign up, baby. All right, I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Peace.